position of the times that we live in is that human beings are social animals and therefore the best way for us to thrive and to be healthy is that we are in company whether that is in the form of having a partner a family or being part of a community uh, a village a town a city state a nation or being part of like-minded groups that share ideologies and values but we are really told that it is in company that we thrive and that we are doing well indeed sometimes even our very sense of belonging is about belonging whether we belong in a relationship belong in a family belong in a community or belong to uh, a political entity but we are told that even our very sense of belonging comes from something about being in a company or having a position or having a connection to a company even spiritual traditions have changed to accommodate these propositions so you find that in many spiritual traditions there is also an emphasis put on community and gathering coming together finding a sense of belonging finding people that uh, think like you finding people with whom you can share certain activities so that becomes a very important way of even affirming a spiritual practice or an inquiry so where does the proposition of aloneness fit amongst these uh, suggestions and these propositions all of which are true I'm not saying that they are not true I'm saying where does the aloneness find a place in, or in amongst these propositions. What I find is that generally even people who are advocating for aloneness, they are often people that are in company or in structures of company themselves. So they may be partnered or they may be part of a family that is um, supportive or they may be uh, surrounded by a group or a community that uh, buys into their philosophy. So it's, I find that it's often quite easy to advocate for aloneness when you're not materially in that experience yourself. Having spent periods in my life alone, I find that the experience of being the single entity is a really challenging one. There is nothing very sentimental or romantic about it and there is also nothing very heroic about it. Because when you go through life in the ordinary activities, doing things by yourself, nobody is rewarding you for being heroic. Rather, people might even look upon you with a certain puzzlement. And isn't it true that when we propose aloneness, there is almost a degree of suspicion in our usual lives. When we say that a person likes their own company or they keep to themselves, we are often implying that there's something abnormal about it, that there might even be something sinister about it. So there is a degree of shame in being alone. There's a degree where you think it is a failure and I'm speaking from personal experience. People might think there's something, that you're something lesser, that there is a, uh, there's something, um, to use the word, it's like a deficit model, that there's something that needs to be fixed before you're whole again. This idea that wholeness is somehow to be revealed through aloneness is a very difficult thing to practice in reality in a culture where there's so much emphasis on being with someone and being in a community where these become the units of social interaction it is very difficult to advocate true aloneness so here there is an either or choice either you can go away take some time out and you're alone or you are in the community and in the group 
and you're participating. It's like the twain shall never meet. In an archetypal tradition, which is of course always about bringing polarities into coexistence, which means it is always this and that, and that, and that, and not this or that. The, the invitation is that aloneness coexists with being in company, being in a relationship, 